Welcome to this lecture here on portraits. And this um, will introduce our second or sixth photo project here in this semester. So a portrait is a photograph that's composed to convey information about a person's appearance, identity, and mood. Studio portraits, they rely on details such as clothing, hairstyle, facial expressions, and body language to teach us about a subject. Um, typically, these studio portraits are tend to be more commercial. However, not always. You can creatively and conceptually use um, the studio and create a studio portrait. Environmental portraits present a person in a context or a setting that contains detail, what we can learn more from their physical appearance. So choices a photographer can use be soft versus hard lighting, framing, vantage point, timing, um, that will also influence our perception of the subject. Location is also key. So we're going to look at a variety of different photographers. Um, which kind of lend you of how you're going to approach this assignment. We're not taking traditional headshots or family portraits. We want to get a little, a little teethier with this. So this is a photographer, Mike Smith, and he uh, shoots in parts of rural Appalachia. He depicts the land and the people who reside there. And this is an example of a studio portrait. It's got this nice soft lighting. It's directed from one angle. However, it doesn't lend commercial. And it's kind of hard to, especially at this state in the beginning aspect, to figure out what will lend more commercial versus what is more of a conceptual, natural portrait. This is really within the subject's face. She is staring at the so at the viewer. That look, it's not a happy look, it's sort of a challenging look. Think about what you want to convey from your subject. This is Polly Gallard. Um, so she works with themes of motherhood, children, memory, loss, and family. So she manages to find the intention tangible poignancy and discovering the beauty and living life that's layered and complex. So this is her project, Reframing Motherhood, Memory, and Loss. And now a portrait doesn't always have to showcase the face of a person. Troy Colby, so he uses photography to understand the world about around him, which is... Um, what a lot of us will tend to use photography for is we use it as a tool for understanding. So he turned his camera not at himself, but towards his family, his wife, his children, and it's his desire to capture his family in a very raw way, not this idyllic Sears catalogs going to a uh, J.C. Penney's and getting your portrait taken. He's not looking to photograph his family in that way. Um, and it's weird because his photographs will become like his family photos, but also the, these fine art pieces at the same time. Uh, so this is uh, Vivian's work where she photographs redheads, redheaded children called Flaming Grace. So you've noticed that there's themes with people are shooting. And we want to have one specific theme with this assignment. So everything's connected by a single thread, whether it be family, motherhood, people of a different, of a certain area, redheads. This photographer photographs his family members in a collection of portraits and representational imagery expressing the individuality of each of his 100 plus family members um, who span into a second generation of U.S. citizenship. So his work displays a soft intimacy, um, one that shows familial bonds between artists and subject, but it's heavy with identity, heritage, and what immigration means between the current political climate. 
Jan Machinsky. The main subject of his work is displaying the inner conditions of the outer body. So in his photographs, he deals with the mental and physical experiences. So this is done in a studio, and you can notice that that very even lighting, that kind of shadow around the edges, that's uh, it's a lot of strobes uh, used within the studio to get that even lighting throughout the whole subject. And it is another example of studio photography that isn't quite commercial. Um, this isn't sort of an idyllic shape. The subject, they're staring upward, despondent. Now they were might have been posed in a way, but there is this sort of real and honesty and, and vulnerability that he takes um, with his images to pull from the subject. Tara Boggart uh, pertains, her photographs um, is about the female identity. So she has vignettes, um, and she crops them in these sort of these oval shapes that have this sort of history of how portraits were taken um, in early photography. They were put in sort of these oval uh, mats, and um, they celebrate 20-something women today within her series. The beauty of all women, um, looking at the time of transition between the, the 20s um, from early adulthood into the 30s. And she actually published this into a book. Amelia Morris, so she works with identity, memory, and self-perception. So she does a lot of self-portraiture. And it's she calls it autobiographical. Autobiographical. And it's about the literal and symbolic self-portraiture in what she calls low-grade performance art. And you could use yourself within the assignment. It doesn't have to be other people. Um, you could use yourself. And using self-portraiture is really tough because learning to be comfortable in front of the camera is really challenging. Um, but once you understand how the camera is in relation to your own body, it makes you a stronger portrait photographer. Lauren Henkin, focus on the tension between preservation and extinction, from fading relationships to invasive growth to material possessions. So she lo looks at history within her photography. So Jenny, she f explores photography as subjective response to the world of light and shadow. Her photographs are heavily expressed and visually commanding. They're rich and diverse. Um, the themes are, uh, there's a lot of poetry, symbolism, and metaphor within her images. So she's not, she's, she's using something else to explain something else. Um, there are personal records tracing universal themes of loss, sexual identity, and the body as metaphor in nature. The common thread in her body of work um, is the impulse to sense rather than see within her work. So your portrait doesn't always have to include a face. Kevin Klein photographs interesting people he finds in New Orleans. And the kind of, um, he says it's like shooting fish in a barrel. He can walk out of this front door and bam, he has it. He looks at his subjects um, and looks at what makes New Orleans culture so rich. And a lot of this is just sort of asking people if you can make their portrait, which is really tough. And I hear it from so many uh, beginning photographers. How do you get people to let you take their portrait or their picture? How do you take pictures of people in public or street photography? You just have to do it. There's no special recipe. There's no secret formula. You have to do it. You have to gain the confidence of yourself to ask someone if you can take their portrait. Brittany Powell. So this is her debt project. So she photographs a whole bunch of different subjects in their homes surrounded by their belongings. And it's sort of, um, she has this sort of documentary type photo photograph, but she includes text, which is the debt that people are holding 
and a little bit uh, about themselves. There's a few questions on how they got the debt and um, how they're handling it. And it's sort of this immediacy of letting everyone know this thing that could be, you know, kind of vulnerable. No one wants to let someone know how much debt they have. But these photographs of these people, in a sense of vulnerability, but also being honest and then um, definitely look up her work, but it's it's a collection of a bunch of them that is sort of this unifying aspect. Understanding how to use lighting is really key. We're building upon every single one of our skills to create our projects. Elizabeth Bick, she, she's a street photographer. So she explores the socio-political relationships between the self and others. So voyeurism and tourism do come into play within her photographs. Um, but she is aware of the politics of objectification within her photography. Now, understanding what is objectifying um, is something to think about when you take your pictures. So she doesn't say it's quite street photography or visual anthropology, but it explores self-representation and how it impacts our values and beliefs, and it's sort of the social contract. Now, this is kind of tough. Think about do you take pictures of people how they are, or do you stage them? What is truth? What is not? And that's sort of something for you to understand, um, or you to, to explore yourself, whether or not you want to direct your subject. Say, hey, can you put your hand up there? Maybe you have a conversation. Maybe you come in with a limited bit of info. Nancy Borowick, um, with compassion and respect, this photographer captures the full range of her parents' experience, both as they endure cancer treatment simultaneously and the daily banter they share as husband and wife and their shifting dynamic as patient and caregiver. So this could be is a document of this frame of time, um, something that's emotional to her, but so she's sort of taking a step removed to sort of capture these moments as maybe a happy moment um, or even the sad moments that happen. Paul D'Amato, so he documents dramas of the everyday life of ordinary people. Um, he looks at different communities in the Chicago area um, and these particular communities that are collateral damage of capitalism. So he looks at people who live in poverty and how it's so persuasive and, and common. And so he looks at, he uses his camera to document the, these moments and to help um, showcase this truth that's happening. And definitely feel free to, to get a little edgy with your images, you know, breaking the rules of composition where you're putting the most important information at the bottom third, which is actually scanned pretty low in, when you're visually reading an image, um, is kind of a risk. But Lisa Lindeve. So she has a highly personal look into the daily lives of her family members as they grapple the effects of her mother's mental illness. So a lot of time, if you've seen this thread of these, these photographers, they're, they're using their camera as a tool to understand something, understand her family with mental illness, understanding the lives of people around them, understanding how cancer is affecting their family. The camera is a tool. And the photograph is our, the can and it's also our key to understanding. Natalie Crick, uh, they make photographs that mimic cliche images of sexuality and beauty. So they look at sort of these common images and, and kind of poke fun and parody them. Kristen Bedford, so they focus on long-term visual studies of where we live, streets we walk down, and places we worship in the homes we create, and sort of these culture of urban centers, rural uh, religious movements, and different 
um, areas within their photography. McNair Evans, so they use that sort of straight on camera flash, but their photography in first person passenger written journals that show this cross section of lives of train travelers and these sort of these people that they come across. Tone Pepe, so they use the construction of identity and performative nature of narrative, gender, and memory within their work. Uh, they use photography as a form for interdisciplinary exploration and specifically dealing with motherhood within her images. Ashley McDowell, so this is about pain, loss, sadness, and hope. And she's documenting her family here. Charles Mintz. So these are um, por environmental portraits of Western homeowners. They create a series that shine light on unusual architecture community that all living in the same home footprint. But everyone's homes is a little different. Tim Eastman. Um, showcases citizens of war in the Ukraine, people who suffer uh, from it and sort of their day-to-day -day life with the threat of violence and death. Jessica Eve Ratter, Ratner, so this series called House of Charm. They take a sympathetic look at women surely struggling with their own demons, um, but they're satisfied with their lifestyle. And not every photograph needs a person. I know it's, a lot of people are very strict and saying every portrait needs a person. But I think it's it, it depends on what it's about. Now, this is about body. Even though there's not a human body here, um, it's the body that encompasses this space, or once was, or will be in the space. This is not about space to me, this is about body. And that's something that may be a little bit more advanced to think about, but maybe keep it in the back of your brain as you're working on this project. Kevin, so he has a social documentary combining portrait, landscapes, and structures to tell in-depth stories that are both analytical and emotional. Hannah Ryan, so she focuses on the sort of this awkward and intimacy of the subway by civically looking at hands, um, sort of narrowing down the focus of people, and in the subway where it's sort of jam-packed, there's a lot of closeness in sort of the uh, rituals that may happen. Jen Davis, so she is a, she does self-portraits and she deals with societal standards of body image by exploiting her own insecurities. They show her daily life at home and she captures herself, a self-proclaimed obese female in her 20s and throughout reconstructions of her experiences. Vivian Mayer, you may know her. Again, this is another one that's sort of about body, but thinking about how you can transform and take different types of photographs by utilizing light and emotion. Look at a little bit of student work for inspiration. This is what students have done. This is a combination of um, when I've done a photography assignment and students that were in my portrait class. Think really key about your composition. What is included and not included in the frame? Try not to shoot everything in an angle. You guys uh, tend to do that a lot. So try not to shoot everything at an angle. Kind of flat forward is probably the best choice. Feel free to break rules of composition. Allow things to fall out of the frame as well.
allow this to be sort of a negotiation between your subject and you as a photographer. Push and pull, figure out how to best make a sort of a organized chaos between the two of you to create these images. And I hope you have fun exploring your photographs and we'll see sort of your first edits in our mini crit next week.